specialist. Today I'm going to talk to you about not a food group, but something equally important, fiber. about foods, I teach about macronutrients and I teach about micronutrients like vitamins, but there's something equally important to talk about and that's fiber. So we have animal uh, products usually supply protein, uh, they supply dairy, but our plants supply fruits, vegetables, and our whole grains. So let's talk about some of those. One of the challenges that I make for my patients is to eat the colors of the rainbow. Every time you're eating a color, you're eating a different nutrient. So while I'm a dietitian and could tell you this one has manganese and this one has magnesium and this one has beta carotene, it's probably not important that you know that. What's important is that you understand that these plants have vitamins that are crucial to health. 50% of Americans are missing magnesium. Without magnesium, you may have leg cramps. And some of uh, Americans are off in their electrolyte balances. These have potassium. If you want your eyes to be stronger, the beta carotenes do that for you. And so every one of these vegetables brings something to the table. The beets, as you've already learned in another video, are important to heart health. The dark green leafy protect us from phytonutrients. So we're all going to be exposed to toxins and it's really important that we use fiber to rotor root the GI tract. So what do I mean by rotor root the GI tract? What I mean is that it gets the sludge out because your body from this end to this end has about 26 feet and that's a food tube. And it's lined with these finger-like projections that stand up and that's where the exchange of nutrients takes place. We don't want that to get gooed up or sluggish because it has the surface area of a football field. And so that's a lot of places for man-made and processed chemical laden food to stick. And so these in their natural state are beautiful. Look at these Brussels sprouts. It's really fun when those come out in the fall. We can actually roast this on the grill. All we have to do is put it on our pan and we spray it with some grapeseed oil or some olive oil or some avocado oil. And then I sprinkle it with Celtic salt that is a natural mineral salt. And I add Trader Joe's 21 Gun Salute, takes care of most everything I need. And so it adds garlic and it adds uh, onion spices, just picks up the flavor. Or Fox Point from Penzi's is another really good one that's a go-to uh, for me. You could just add Hungarian paprika or you could um, add just salt and pepper. And this is already ready to go in the oven or to the grill like this. And then we will just cut the Brussels sprouts off and eat them on a salad or as a side dish. I love them with a lemon vinaigrette. Okay, what else? Oh, look, here's an acorn squash. An acorn squash can just be split. And uh, I remember when we did catering and we entertained the president of Ireland and it was in the fall. So we had a squash soup or we had a pumpkin soup. We had baguettes on the side that had the flag of Ireland, the colors of those in a pate on it. It was really fun. What I like to do is take these and I roast them on a pan and then I fill the cavity uh, with soup. The same thing is what I do with a spaghetti squash. I cut it and I take the insides out, the guts and the seeds, and then I prick it and roast it. And I use this to actually make spaghetti squash. So I use these noodles. Instead of using a high carb noodle, we're just pulling the noodles out of the spaghetti squash. And then we top it with marinara. We can add meat or not add meat. And these are spaghetti boats like this that are just wonderful. Your deep yellow gives you beta carotene. It's a wonderful nutrient. And then 
with my roasted root vegetables. Look what I can make. So, catering as a side dish, a lot of times we use the sweet potato. We use white potatoes. What do you think these are? These are parsnips. They're like a carrot, but they're white and they have a funky different flavor. Beets, most of you know what beets are. So these are actually tubers. The tubers grow below the ground, as does a turnip. It grows below the ground with its top coming up this way. These are leeks. Again, leeks grow into the ground and this green part comes out of the ground. So fiber only comes from plants. It never comes from an animal. So an animal is protein is never going to rotor root your GI tract. It takes fiber and fluid to do that. So yeah, these little guys are a starch. So look at them, they're potatoes. There's actually white potatoes, Dutch yellow potatoes have a yellow meat, and then there's red potatoes. My grandmother used to um, do skin on potatoes and boil them. The skin has a lot of the nutrients in it, so we actually don't want to peel uh, the potatoes. We want to eat the skin on. Okay, so does this look like a plant? Looks like one to me. This is broccoliolini. And so it is a carotenoid. And so carotenoids are flavonoids, and so they tie up free radicals, they protect you from cancer. So they're one of the good guys. In fact, I think they're all good guys, and they all bring a different flavor and nutrient profile to the table. Now, most of us probably eat tomatoes. I taught at an elementary school with some of the doctors from OSU Med, and we asked the kids to name vegetables. They said ketchup was a vegetable. Ketchup has more sugar than a donut. So I don't agree with them on that. They were just kindergartners, but they still need real vegetables like these tomatoes. So I'm very particular about my tomatoes. These are heirloom tomatoes. So heirloom tomatoes are not genetically modified. So a lot of our tomatoes, over 90% of our tomatoes are man engineered and modified. So when I'm looking for a tomato, I'm always looking for an heirloom tomato. I don't want to gas ripen. They can say vine ripen, they can say anything they want, but I want an heirloom tomato and is my number one go-to. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these guys up and then roast them in an oven, 400 degrees for 20 minutes, and use that as a side dish throughout the winter. And so all the different little flavors in there are wonderful. It's good enough to be a meal for company and it's earthy enough to be a meal every week at home. What do you think this is? This is a summer squash, okay? So I could have showed you this guy whole, but I've already uh, cut him up and roasted him in the oven. I could have grilled him. So there's zucchini squash and then there's yellow squash. They're called summer squashes but they're available throughout the winter. So a lot of times we'll use zucchini squash and we'll zoodle it and make noodles out of it. But the yellow squash, I like to cook for a soup. What I really like to do is pair my soups so that I roast some heirloom tomatoes and then I roast uh, some yellow squash and I do painted soups in the bowls and I can swirl them and add toppings and just make them delicious. And with soup and salad or soup and crackers, you have a full meal chock full of nutrition. I'm going to show you those soups in just a second. So now we've used a Nutribullet and we've pureed the heirloom tomatoes and we've pureed the yellow squash. And what I really like doing is making a painted soup so that I pour one against the other in a double fisted pour. And so I have two beautiful colors and then I can top them out with some, a mixture of more veggies, which is sweet potatoes, squash, red onion, celery, rosemary, and parsley. And it makes a beautiful painted soup like this. The other thing I can do is pour it into an acorn squash. So if it's a squash soup, I can pour the yellow or if I wanted to do the red. And so we've roasted our acorn squash and we filled it 
And obviously if we were really showing off, we could put a crust on top of that, almost like a little pot pie, but it's a vegetable pot pie and uh, serve that for dinner. And then let's try something else. Okay, on this, I'm going to use a marinara. And so this is our spaghetti squash that we roasted and we pulled away. And uh, the most important thing, if you're going to buy this already made is to look in the ingredients and make sure it doesn't have sugar. So um, my kids had an Italian nanny and her pet peeve was Americans putting sugar in everything and ruining what would be a good uh, marinara sauce. So um, if we add meat, it's called a ragu sauce, uh, but marinara can have seafood or it can have a plant-based um, like lentils added to it. I'm gonna do lentils here. I'm going to add uh, tofu ground beef crumbles here. And so all I've done is boost up the fiber and the nutrients without um, adding any animal proteins that could be inflammatory. So we'll just stir this in and we'll return this to the oven and just to let that heat through and top it with some Parmesan cheese if we want or some plant-based cheese and serve it. So I'm going to return this to the oven. You have everything plant-based today, ready to serve, bring nutrition to the table and fiber to your gut. Thank you.